there are two situations that we need to distinguish when it comes to changing the state in the graph. One of them is the event control and the other one is called the clock control. And they differ in fundamental, fundamental ways. So we can follow an edge either when we have a new event that will cause a state transition. So for example, when we have a new input, then we look at the input and we look at the state and then we make the state transition. This was the case that we had in the example with the variable name. The other variant is that our circuit is controlled by an external clock signal. And then this clock signal will cause the state transition. This means that each time we have a new clock signal, we look at the input, we look at the state, and then we make a state transition. So an example of this was the modulo 5 counter, and also the lion threat that we looked at was a similar uh, situation. These clock control situations can sometimes cause a little bit of troubles for us because it means that we may have to introduce additional states since the clock can be very fast. So in the example that we have with the modulo 5 counter, we would require extra states, but in the case with the lion threat, we would not require extra states. We can see this from the state transition graphs from the two different problems. So if we look at the problem with the modulo 5 counter, we see that if we have an external clock signal and we are, for example, in state S0 and we have the input 1, 1, then we will, at the time when we get the clock signal, move to state S1. But if this clock is very fast and we have still 1, 1 at the input, then we'll just immediately move to S2, we will immediately move to S3, and then actually what will happen is that if we have a very fast clock and we have 1, 1, for example, here uh, as the signal, we would just go round and round and round at a very fast pace here in our state transition graph. In the case with the lion threat, where we had two lions, we did not have the same problem because look at this example when we are in S0 and we get, for example, 0, 1, at the input, what will happen is that when we get the clock signal, we will move to state S1. But then we will just stay in S1 as long as we have this 0, 1 as the input. Similar when we go from S1 to S2 at the input 1, 0, we will just stay in this state here, which is here called S1 tilde, as long as we have one zero at input. So in this case, we would not have to introduce extra states in order to solve this situation.